I firmly believe that if you don't sleep well, nothing else matters from a health and wellness perspective. And that's why I pay so much attention to my sleep quality. And a lot of others want to do that too. They, a lot of people realize that they need to improve their sleep. The problem is a lot of people struggle with falling asleep quickly, getting enough deep and REM sleep, staying asleep and waking up fully rested. And so sleep trackers are an interesting tool because they allow you to figure out, okay, how are you sleeping? How much time do you spend in the various stages? stages of sleep and what can you potentially do to fix a problem, you know, if you identify one. And so in this video, I'll break down the best sleep trackers on the market based on scientific research, validation studies, and my own experience testing them. I've tested countless sleep trackers over the years, and this video kind of consolidates the best ones that I found, many of which I still use today. Now, before we get into the roundup, I want to say two things. One is no consumer-based sleep tracker is 100% accurate. You know, not even a sleep study where you would go to a lab and be hooked up to all kinds of, you know, cables and stuff is 100% accurate because chances are you don't sleep as well in that lab as you do in your own bed. You know, so there are limitations to sleep tracking, but I think all of the trackers, at least the ones I mentioned in this video, are capable of identifying or helping you identify trends. The absolute numbers, you know, how much time you spend in deep and REM sleep might not be 100% accurate, but at least you can see trends. What if I stop drinking before alcohol, before going to bed? You know, does that increase my deep sleep, no matter if the absolute number is accurate or not? So keep that in mind. Number two is I have a link. I'm going to include a link to a a blog post in the description that goes into more details that I update frequently and that has links to scientific research and to some of the validation studies that those sleep trackers have conducted. I also include a bunch of discount codes to some of the devices that I mentioned in, the, in this video. So with that, we're going to jump right in with what I consider the best overall sleep tracker and that's the WHOOP 4.0. That's the current model of the WHOOP strap that's available and I really like it because it's, it's first of all comfortable to wear. It tracks sleep and sleep strain and recovery. It has a bunch of advanced sensors that make it relatively accurate. Whoop has also done a number of validation studies against, you know, sleep labs to kind of gauge um, how close the Whoop strap gets. And it gets fairly close. Again, not 100% accurate, but fairly close. Whoop also offers a sleep coach that provides personalized recommendations, like how much time you should spend in bed, when you should go to bed, when you should wake up, etc., to improve your sleep hygiene, your sleep routine, and ultimately the quality of your sleep. And it also allows you to correlate lifestyle factors like alcohol consumption, sun exposure, exercise, etc., etc., with changes in sleep quality. So it's it provides very actionable information that you can use to improve your sleep. The downside of Whoop is it requires a subscription. So you have to sign up for. <clears throat> you can do it month by month, but you know that's the most expensive option. Uh, you can sign up for a year, for two years, etc., for eighteen months. I think is the longest one to lower the price that you pay. So that's a downside. You don't just buy, pay a device and then you're you're done with it. No, you pay an ongoing subscription. The second advantage, and that's ultimately the reason why I stopped wearing Whoop, is it doesn't support airplane mode. So I cannot turn off, I cannot turn off the Bluetooth radio in the Whoop strap. And that means I'm constantly exposed to additional EMFs. Those are a concern for me. Might not be a concern for you, but I tr try to reduce my EMF exposure as much as possible. And I would love for Whoop to introduce airplane mode. Ideally, one that automatically kicks in once it detects sleep and turns off once it detects that I'm awake again. It would be super simple to implement and would a meaningful reduction in EMF exposure. But the overall assessment of Whoop is if you want deep sleep insights and don't mind the subscription, Whoop is likely the best option. Number two, the most futuristic sleep tracker is in my opinion the ultra human ring that's the one i currently wear actually not as of this recording because <laughs> the battery died and i'm waiting for a replacement but if you don't want to wear anything around your wrist the ring is incredibly comfortable it looks slick it's just amazing how many advanced sensors ultra human managed to pack into that tiny ring it's very comparable to the aura ring by the way which i also own uh, but i think the ultra human does a better job at, at sleep tracking that's just my opinion based on what I've seen, you know, in comparison with other sleep trackers that I own. Ultra Human seems to be more spot on than the Aura Ring. Um, it, from a pro perspective, again, the advanced sensors packed into a tiny form factor. It tracks HRV, body temperature, movement, circadian rhythm. It tracks just a 
bunch of biometrics that you can use to not only improve your overall health, but your sleep in particular. And it supports airplane mode, so I can turn it into airplane mode in the morning, uh, in the evening and turn it off in the morning to reduce my EMF exposure during sleep. From a downside perspective, uh, Ultra Human does not have yet a bunch of validation studies to confirm the accuracy of the sleep tracking algorithm. And as I've mentioned or alluded to already, I've seen some battery reliability issues. Uh, Ultra Human has been very good at replacing those right away. But nonetheless, there are some issues I think the company needs to work out. I'm not sure if they're software or hardware, but that's something to keep in mind. Ultimately, you know, the Ultra Human is currently my favorite fitness, sleep and recovery tracker. That's the one I wear every day. And uh, it's been working really well. The most accurate sleep tracker, arguably from a consumer grade perspective is Muse S. It's actually an, uh, it's a headband. It's an EEG, so it measures brain waves. And that's ultimately the best way that we know to measure sleep because tracking heart rate and movement, those are all indirect indicators of sleep, but you can be very still and not move and, you know, trick the sensor into thinking that you're sleeping, uh, even though your brain is highly active. With an EEG, like the one that's built into the Muse S, you can monitor brain, brain waves and tell much more accurately if you're sleeping and in what stage of sleep you're in. Of course, the Muse S headband also includes a heart rate uh, sensor and uh, an accelerometer. So if you're moving, it can detect it. It can detect head movement, you know, so are you sleeping with your head on the left or on the right side, etc. Uh, it also doubles as a meditation tool. That's really, I think, Muse started as a meditation tool and then they integrated sleep tracking after the fact. The downside of Muse S is it requires a constant Bluetooth connection. So that means it's streaming from the sensor to your phone while you're sleeping. Again, not ideal. I would not necessarily want to do this every single day. So I've used Muse S only to validate the findings of other sleep trackers to see how close they are getting to what Muse is recording. It's arguably also slightly less comfortable than wrist-worn devices. It's not uncomfortable by any means, but having something on your head, even something as simple as a baseball cap, you know, at some point you might feel like, I want to take it off. And so it's the same with Muse S. But overall, it's probably the most accurate one on the market from a consumer perspective. It's comfortable to wear, and uh, I really like the interface and the information you get from the device. The best non-wearable sleep tracker, in my opinion, is the 8 Sleep Pod 4. That's actually a mattress cooling solution that I've reviewed on this channel before. I'm going to link the video that we use on a daily basis to control the temperature under the sheets to improve our sleep. But 8 Sleep also has an act, what's called an active grid. It's basically passive sensors that are woven into the mattress cover that detect movement and changes in pressure and heart rate and respiratory rate and all of those things to facilitate sleep tracking. And it also appears to be relatively accurate in line very often with uh, Ultra Human and with Whoop. Sometimes it's not. But overall, I want to say from a, again, trend perspective, it's accurate enough to detect changes in your sleep pattern based on maybe changes you you know you did or you implement as part of your lifestyle um, and the clear advantage is you don't need to worry anything uh, it's also you don't have to worry about emf from the sensor there is emf exposure from the hub that's next to the bed but at least in your bed on your body you don't get additional exposure to emfs uh, and you get the temperature regulation in addition which can help improve your sleep you know so if you're if you're tracking sleep in order to improve your sleep you know you get basically both and even more with the eight sleep and i really like this from a downside perspective well it's expensive you know can cost you a couple of thousand dollars depending on the model and the size of your bed etc um, there are some variances in sleep stage accuracy so again you know looking at trends is more important than in absolute numbers but if budget isn't an issue and you want passive tracking plus sleep optimization optimization, 8 Sleep is an absolute game changer. The best smartwatch um, for sleep tracking arguably is the latest generation Apple Watch. As of this recording, it's the Apple Watch 10 and the Ultra Human Generation 2, I think. Uh, the Ultra Human, the Apple Watch Ultra Generation 2 or Ultra 2. Um, I used to have the original Apple Watch Ultra and used it for sleep tracking a lot. And I finally decided to part with it uh, to reduce my EMF exposure from having a smartwatch and I'm wearing just a regular you know, watch. But from a sleep tracking perspective, it appears to be relatively accurate. I mean, definitely some of the sensors are FDA approved. Uh, that is the aid, their heart rate and the ECG tracking. It integrates with Apple Health, obviously. Um, the interface is nice. It's not super advanced in terms of giving you actionable insights in what you can change and helping you correlate lifestyle changes with changes in sleep quality. I've also noticed that the sleep stage tracking is somewhat inconsistent, uh, at least as compared to some of the other trackers I'm using. But, you know, again, who knows who is really right? Um, again, from a tr keeping tabs on your trend perspective, 
interact if the Apple Watch definitely does that. It has a slightly lower heart rate sampling frequency, so maybe that would explain some of the, uh, the inconsistencies. But overall, if you already own an Apple Watch, you know, it's an okay, it's okay for sleep tracking. You know, you don't don't expect super accurate sleep data necessarily and, and a lot of actionable insights. But if you already own one, there's probably not a need to invest in a separate sleep tracker if you already wear the Apple Watch, you know. There are some sleep trackers that I don't recommend. One is the Fitbit Sense. I tried that and it just appears to be all over the place. Inconsistent heart rate data. It even detected heart rate while the device was uh, lying on a table with a reflective surface. So if, if, the, if the device cannot even understand whether or not it's being worn. I don't necessarily trust the data it's producing. So Fitbit Sense was really a no-go for me. And the Withings Sleep uh, is also something that I don't think can, uh, does a very good job at detecting at least not the stages of sleep. Maybe when you go to bed and when you get out, obviously because of the pressure sensors, but anything in between, I would not trust the Withings Sleep either. With that, we're gonna wrap it up. Um, sleep tracking can be useful. Don't get stressed out and hung up on the data if it doesn't, uh, look what you expect because again the absolute numbers might be wrong my wife for a long time had uh next to no deep sleep reported i don't think it was accurate at all because she would have felt it in the morning and you know overall her her, her energy levels and stuff would be completely off if she got only 10 minutes of deep sleep per night so don't get too hung up and stressed out just look at the trends are you improving are you trending up are you trending down are you staying even you know and kind of try to correlate that with lifestyle choices but any of those trackers i mentioned in this video they were the Ultra Human, uh, the Muse S or the 8 Sleep or even the Apple Watch and I can provide real insights that can help you improve your sleep. But remember, no consumer sleep tracker is perfect. Um, they all have accuracy issues, so don't get too hung up on it. But with that, we're going to wrap it up. Let me know what sleep tracker do you use? Have you had good or bad experiences? Let me know in the comments. Share this video with someone who could use it. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe. Uh, stick around. Any engagement is helpful to help uh, others find this video on YouTube. And with that, uh, we're going to say goodbye. Until the next one.